Hello everyone, I'm Cool Guy. Welcome back. I had a little vacation weekend. I have some nice content lined up this week, but today I would like to talk about three things that are needed as soon as possible for PvP. Here's what's cool about this video and why I enjoy these. I view these as an open discussion. I have three things that I believe that the Crucible needs above anything else, and after I talk about each one, I do have a summary of why those three. And my three is probably going to be different from yours, and your top three is going to be different from mine. That's expected. We can talk about it and find some unified answers, and to be clear, there's no wrong answers. There are some things that PvP needs in players' eyes that others don't think or put high on their list. It could be Bloom, a sandbox change, a change to health and supers, quality of life. It's anything that you believe will make the Crucible better. I'm pretty passionate about this and I feel like it needs to be talked about because I love the Crucible. I play it every day. I genuinely love it and there's a lot of players that spend their time there. The players that play the Crucible currently do so mostly for the love of the game. And aside from a couple prime Ingram chases per week, there really isn't a reason to play PvP. Aside from, you just enjoy it. And my three are going to be thought together collectively with an end goal. So starting off with number one, we have the maps. As of today, May 28th marks exactly eight months since a new Crucible map has been introduced into Destiny 2, about 243 days. If Season of Opulence doesn't have any new maps, that puts us at around 11 months, almost a year. We do have that six-man matchmade activity, but we don't know what that is. Regardless of that activity, whatever it is, the PvP community needs new maps. New maps are what keeps the wheels turning. The last time we got new maps, Citadel, Equinox, Firebase, Echo, these maps were introduced with the breakthrough game mode. They were designed with that in mind, and to me, they don't play well because of that. They were designed for 4v4 comp, especially Equinox. Now, Firebase Echo plays oddly, and Citadel is decent, I guess, but the reasoning for new maps goes much deeper than that. We had a huge shift to 6v6 from 4v4 midway through Destiny 2. A lot of the vanilla maps were designed with 4v4 in mind and with the comp playlist with countdown in mind, things like that. Destiny 1 finished with 31 maps, and that's counting all DLCs. We had big maps like First Light, smaller maps like Asylum. Destiny 2 has 24 maps currently, but as we know, some of those maps don't go into rotation. Just like in Destiny 1, they took out First Light, Bastion, Skyline, the bigger maps, but the same goes for Destiny 2, the Emperor's map, Eternity, that was a Trials map. But there's some here in Destiny 2 that shouldn't be weighted very heavy in rotation like Boss Talk, Equinox, maybe Legion's Gulch or the Fortress. Some maps play quite well in my opinion. Endless Veil, vale, Javelin 4 to name a few, but a lot of them kind of fall up short in comparison. We need new maps. And honestly, I'm to this point, like this is where my head's at. If new maps aren't being made and won't be made, and this isn't on the table at all, at least port some of the old Destiny 1 maps over. And again, if new ones aren't being made, if they're just not going to happen, at least redesign some of the Destiny 1 maps and port them right on in. I'm pretty sure they have the assets. Widow's Court, Firebase, Anomaly, Wrestlelands, Exodus Blue, Frontier, Twilight Gap. There were some that had lifts and portals, and that brought some depth to the maps, like Crossroads and Vertigo. And sure, those wouldn't really be good for comp, but they'd be really fun in quick play. Sure, some of the community would say that that's just a reskin, or it's an old map, why aren't we getting new maps? The simple answer is this, it's better than nothing. And honestly, some of these maps would play so well in Destiny 2, because like I said, I'm pretty sure the assets are still there. Just let us play them. Like, it's almost a plea to Bungie, man. I mean, who knows? Maybe they're going to announce one or two maps with Season of Opulence. But it seems like with this Season Pass model, it doesn't include maps. I mean, the DLC-style expansions did. Maps were a part of new hype for the content, and it just hasn't been here as of late. But hopefully soon, we get some new ones. Number two, the PvP in-game and loot. To this day, since they were introduced, there is no activity in PvP that grants enhanced perks. The Raid, Reckoning, Dreaming City are all ways to get them, but for PvP, no bounties, not even Iron Banner, not Comp, no activity. And we'll talk about that in a moment. A lot of players talk about Trials of Osiris, Trials of the Nine. That was the in-game activity for Destiny 1, going flawless, getting that blind perdition that's adept. The way the gear looked, all of it, and Trials has always had some issues, kind of like how current Comp has, DDoS, recovery counts. I'm not sure that they want to put up with that, but it reached the goal of bringing players together. Maybe a PvP player could help a couple PvE players. Maybe play to five wins just to get the first rewards. It was challenging and it was very good for the streamers in YouTube, the overall health of the game. It kept Destiny going in late Destiny 1. It was fun to play and it was fun to watch, but in Destiny 2 it didn't really hit the mark with 4v4 and the way it was set up. And I stand pretty firm that 3v3 elimination is Trials. It's what made the game mode what it is. And it's okay to disagree with that statement, no one's wrong, but some sort of PvP in-game is needed now. If they're worried about Osiris, or maybe the Nine lore-wise, why not bring in Shax in the Red Jacks, or bring Saladin into it? And I'm pretty sure that if they were to introduce something like this, it has to be with a big expansion or a big DLC, because they just can't do it out of nowhere. I mean, think Forsaken. All the changes that they made and all the players that got brought in, 
It needs something like that to go along with Trials. Trials just can't be a standalone, if that makes sense. But it's there for players to play. The same with the maps. It kind of gives back to the PvP players. And then we get into loot, and I start off this section with enhanced perks, there's none for PvP, and in-game would be a place to have something like this, but it goes beyond that. It's not just PvP. I mean, each season we have the same gear, no one cares about the Crucible armor too much because there's way better armor out there in the game. Since there's no armor and it all kind of looks the same, you start looking at weapons, and I'm here to tell you if I get one more hard truths, I'm gonna lose it. One more Crucible sword, like, I'll lose my mind. There's like eight weapons that drop with the Crucible, and they've been dropping forever. I mean, does not compute Wishbringer, Last Perdition, Better Devils, Anonymous Autumn, Play the Game, and so on. And it seems like each season that we get, one randomly rolled weapon is added to the loot pool. And most weapons you get from Crucible are just way outclassed by others, so it makes the loot pool smaller and smaller. But it goes beyond that. I'm going to put a wall of text on the screen. There's about 375 total legendary weapons in the game. ARs all the way to sidearms to rocket launchers. Only 111? are randomly rolled. The meta goes to archetype, and so does playtime. A good example is the Black Armory weapons that were upgraded old weapons. Tone Patrol, Swift Ride, Balagant. All great and fun to use. The problem is they're extremely rare. Once you even get the drop, which is a small percentage, you then need the perks. Most aren't obtainable without the time. Are you looking at Crucible and specifically Dust Rock Blues? You could grind Gambit with its loot pool to try to get a parcel of Stardust, but the best archetype comes from going to a lost sector and farming the boss over and over with a much smaller loot pool to get that dust rock. So PvP needs new gear sets to look at, enhanced perks to get, and more loot to get. All of this keeps the wheels turning. In a way, it's rewarding PvP players for playing. And again, most are playing purely due to the love of the game. I know that I do. I love PvP, so I want that feeling back. I mean, Destiny 1 post-match, you get an Ice Luna to drop, and you couldn't wait to see the roll. The same goes for a ton of weapons. Now it's like, well, hard truths, better devils, nice. I just really hope that they're working on something with these two. Number three is going to be the super and super mods. These two coexist as one. For the super mods, it's a great concept, but way too potent. And mind you, I'm strictly talking PvP here. They need adjusted in PvP only. PvE is fine. If you were just to spawn into a PvP match and just stand there AFK, your base super would be around 4 minutes and 58 seconds. If you have on 5 super mods, that goes to around 3 minutes and 32 seconds. So at a base level, that's how much faster you're getting your super than the enemy. You stack on perks like pump action to gain more super energy with shotgun kills or light reactors, something like that, and your super bar flies up. And once you get it, you get it first, then you can snowball. You start creating orbs, your team gets theirs. I've had my super from the time I started a match to when I got it be a little bit over a minute. That's running full mods with pump action, something like that. That's not okay. It ends up being a game full of supers, and when you have those, when you have those supers, you control the power ammo, which also spawns frequently, and once in that super, the second part is how much health you have, health-wise with roaming supers and supers in general. I believe True Vanguard made a video not too long ago about this. I mean, in Destiny 1, there was hero moments. Someone pops hammers, you're quick on your feet, you can maybe snipe them, take them out of their super. In Destiny 2, it's a shame, man. Most of the time, you hear a super pop and you run. That's what Destiny PvP is when you hear a super, like you hear Bottom Tree Striker go off that gets health regen on a kill, you just run. Most supers you just run or even jump off the map, and you jump off the map, you spawn on the other side, and sometimes the super's still gonna be coming at you, the same exact one. Like Spectral Blades is extremely hard to hit when they're jumping and doing the backflip going into Wraith mode, like if you land a headshot on that, I, I believe that they should go down, but they don't. Or same thing with the Striker Titan that's just shoulder charging left and right as he's kind of stalking you down. I mean, if you hit him in the head, I feel that that should take him out. And the worst part, like especially against Bottom Tree Striker, once he stalks you down and gets the kill, like immediately all the work that you did into even chunk his health down is immediately back. So it's just tough. So I think both of these need a hard look at, whether it be weapons that can take them out a little bit easier, kind of like in Destiny 1, or just adjusting the overall health of a roaming super. And they do that, Spec Blades is a tad easier to take out with its nerf, same for Nova Warp with its constant reworking, but I'm not really here to say what that needs to be, I'm here to kind of give feedback on these if that makes sense, because I love the game and I want the game to be more healthy. And all of this isn't to mention sandbox changes, meta changes, all of it, I did feel like I needed to make this because sure there are adjustments to exotics that happen every now and again, or a super is a tad too strong or too long, but most of the changes that we get in the Crucible strictly revolve around tuning specific things that are running the show. To tweak things that are getting out of hand, those are the updates that we're seeing, but not things like maps. So your top three is going to be different from mine, but I believe first, above all, these three things are needed ASAP. Maps for the player base, an end game with loot to chase, loot in general, and a look at super health and super mods. Just thinking about those three makes me really happy. And a lot of you out there play Crucible just strictly, again, like I said, just for the fun of it, for the love of it. And it would just be really nice to get something back. 
So now's your time. I would like to thank you for spending a little bit of your day with me. If you're new here, remember to hit the subscribe button. We have a pretty cool group over here. Like and comment if you guys see fit. What do you think about all this? What's your top three? Above anything else, what would you like to happen in the Crucible? Thank you guys for watching, and until the next one, I am Cool Guy.